is very hot off the press, and I am excited about it and inspired by reading it, and um, yeah, you should read it too. It's called The Spirituality of Imperfection, uh, and it, it it started out, so the first half of it was fairly dry, and he was, he and she, there's two authors, um, were talking about Alcoholics Anonymous, and they were using a lot of rabbinic um, parables kind of pulled out of the Torah and other different places, you know, just they were kind of using those to illustrate their points through storytelling was what they were, was what the premise was. Um, and I think storytelling is important. I, I, I didn't necessarily like starting out how they were using the stories that they were using and it seemed overtly religious and I am very wary of that. Um, anyway, so I made it through about a hundred and something pages of the book and was kind of, it wasn't saying anything to me. It wasn't speaking to me about anything. It wasn't really giving me anything other than a brief history of, um, Alcoholics Anonymous and its origins and where it came from, who started it, why it started. Um, you know, those things were talked about in there. And he was, and the, the authors were writing it, I felt, as kind of an apologetic book for Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, I was trying to figure out why they were writing it. But then they started getting into the specifics of what the big book from Alcoholics Anonymous actually talks about um, regarding forgiveness and resentment and tolerance and acceptance and all that stuff there that they go into. And... It was that section. It's like the last half of the book um, where they go into a lot more of that uh, stuff actually spoke to me a lot more um, than the first half, which maybe they were just warming up and kind of getting into context and whatever. Um, but if you do read the book, make sure you hang on past the first half and get into that second half because that's where the real meat of the um spirituality of imperfection, in my opinion, came from, um, and where they really did a very good job with the book. Um, I loved some of the points that they made. I loved a lot of the points they made in that portion of the book. Uh, one of them was talking about how forgiveness, you can't force forgiveness, and we know that you can't force forgiveness. We know that you, But they talk about how the harder people try to forgive, the farther away they get from forgiveness. Um, and how it, it's not something that we can, it's not something that we can generate ourselves. You know, we can't generate forgiveness of someone who wronged us ourselves. It, it's a gift that has to be given, forgiveness. You know, it has to be given to us um, by a higher being or an outside source or however you want to look at it. Um, and that was really powerful and how they talk about that was extremely powerful and the the lack of forgiveness uh being the being um a result of resentment which is a result of hanging on to the anger sadness and fear that come with being victimized by somebody else um and how resentment stops you from forgiving and how if you can let go of the resentment, then the anger, the sadness, and the fear will eventually heal themselves. But resentment will stop you from resolving those issues. Um, that spoke to me, and it spoke to a lot of the situations that I've been surrounded with and, and some of the stuff I've been through. Um, I don't need to get in depth, but all of that to say, it was extremely powerful and very well done. They laid it out very well. Um, and as they started to get a little more into the meat of uh, the book, what I would call the meat of the book, they backed off a little bit with the stories, and the stories were became more applicable and a little less um, out of context and trite and banal. Um, anyway, I really enjoyed the book. Um, I read the last half of it today. So about 143 pages today, um, which maybe that was why I got something out of it because I sat down and read the chunk and it all kind of ran together. So I got a little more out of it that way. That could very well be. Um, but I love their take on the spirituality of imperfection 
and they were saying that Alcoholics Anonymous is um, is a spirituality of, of imperfection, and that we are all imperfect, and that you know that is so true um, in any s- spiritual practice that you are involved with or you've read about or you've known, it always started out as acknowledging the imperfection of the human and doing your best to grow from that and build from that. Not to gain perfection, but to acknowledge your imperfection and as a result become humbled by it and as a result become more empathetic to other humans, be able to reach out and give and... um, and in kind receive and all that stuff. They go into that. Um, And it was interesting to me how they portrayed Alcoholics Anonymous as um, a spiritual group and as a spiritual community, which I understood that it was a, a, a group to help people who were struggling with alcoholism and wanted to get clean or, you know, saw that as the only way out um, or the only solution but looking at it through the eyes of the authors in this book is very interesting to look at it as a form of spirituality, a very, a very new form of spirituality, a very recent form of spirituality to help people um, realize their imperfection, acknowledge their addiction, and deal with it in a healthy way instead of being instead of having their lives ruined by it or all of the other things that could happen from addiction. Um, but I thought that was very, very interesting. And I they did distinguish between spirituality and religion, which I appreciated. Um, and anyway, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, definitely worth a read. Definitely worth the time. Um, check it out. It's called The Spirituality of Imperfection.